new news has emerged from China, from Cherry, which is actually, I believe, the second fastest growing large car company in the world this year. And this new news is kind of scary if you have to compete with Cherry, whether you're a battery manufacturer or even just a car manufacturer, because Cherry make cars. So why is this scary? Well, because Cherry don't make things up. They make pretty good cars. And now they say that they have a solid state battery with 600 watt hours per kilogram of energy density, meaning this battery has about double the energy density of the next highest energy density battery currently in existence in the EV market. Double. Yeah, I mean, this isn't like the some of the solid state batteries we've been talking about on this channel over the last six months that have an energy density of say 350 to 400 watt hours per kilogram. This is 600 watt hours per kilogram. And this is a manufacturer that sells electric cars in the budget to affordable sector. I mean, imagine if these guys came out with say a mid-range EV that was you know, relatively affordable for the common man. I see myself as being, you know, someone who would be interested in this. Imagine if they came out with this and they're like, well, guys, we've got a, it's a pretty small battery. It's only a 50 kilowatt hour battery. It's going to make your EV lighter than pretty much every internal combustion car on the market. And you're going to have probably, probably about 600 miles of range, a thousand kilometers. But if you want a bit more, pay a bit extra, you can get an extra 200 kilometers of range if you want it. I mean, this is the new era. Things are about to change. And I know a lot of people are going to say, no, they're not. No, everyone's talking about solid state batteries. It's never going to happen. The naysayers will always exist, but technology will always change. We cannot stop change. People hate change. So I'm having this discussion today uh, with Lee from Resync Solar, the CEO of one of the biggest solar and battery companies in Australia. And he's saying people don't like change. Why are more people not buying EVs? Because they can't handle change. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, and I'll be at the Sydney International Motor Show next weekend, and I've got 100 free tickets for you guys. I had 100 before. They went very quickly. I've got 100 more free tickets. I'll put a link in the description if you want to get those. Um, just click on that link. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. 2025 Cherry Global Innovation Conference just held yesterday. Uh, it was in Woohoo. Uh, Cherry unveiled their new solid state battery module that achieves a cell energy density of 600 watt hours per kilogram. So this wasn't a secret Toyota module where they'll never show it to you, but say it's coming out every year for the last 15 years. I'm not exaggerating, by the way. Where, why, why is Cherry showing us this battery, unveiling the prototype, showing people the module, but Toyota, it's all hush, can't see it, don't want to show it to you. Toyota are saying they're going to be first to market. They just said that, I believe, two days ago. They're going to be first to market. They're going to beat everyone else. But they've been saying this since 2014. So I'm, I'm very skeptical. Anyhow, this is the highest energy density battery we know of that's actually been shown to the market, to us, to humans. Um, yeah. The Cherry Solid State Battery Research Institute developed the module and adopted an in-situ polymerized solar electrolyte system paired with a lithium-rich manganese cathode material. So very interesting here. A polymerized solid, solid electrode, I'm not exactly sure um, what the solid electrode is made of, but the manganese cathodes, that's interesting. It's kind of combining that concept that Tesla's had for a long time with the lithium manganese rich batteries. And obviously General Motors now, they're using um, manganese rich cathodes as well in their lithium batteries, not solid state, but their traditional sort of lithium batteries. Or Cherry said the cell maintained power delivery even after extreme abuse tests such as nail penetration, um, drilling into it with a power drill, and it didn't catch fire or produce smoke. Vehicles equipped with this technology could theoretically exceed 1,500 kilometers on a single charge, 
with real-world driving ranges expected to reach around 1,300 kilometers. If you want that, I mean, you can get that with a petrol or gasoline diesel car today, but very few people would even want a petrol tank or gasoline tank capable of delivering them 1,300 kilometers of range. So I don't think that's going to happen very quickly. I think we're going to be looking at a lot less range than that. But theoretically, if Cherry wanted to, they wanted to come out with a bang and just shock everyone, they could make an EV with 1,300 kilometers of range, assuming this battery is ready for market. You know, I mean, I'm going to guess it's going to take a couple of years because the last ba solid state battery that Cherry, the one that they're actually testing in their EVs right now, it has an energy density of 350 watt hours per kilogram. This is nearly double that. So I'm going to guess that this is like a new version of that battery. The company reaffirmed its plan for a pilot operation in 2026 and a broader rollout in 2027, but I don't know if that broader rollout is a reference to this new battery or the existing battery they've been testing now for a very long time. I think it's probably the 350 watt hour per kilogram battery coming out in 2027. My impression is that this newer 600 watt hour per kilogram energy density battery would probably be more like 2028, 2029, further down the road. If this happens, then Cherry will have the best solar state battery on the market in terms of energy density. This clearly outperforms everyone. There's no one else. Uh, Factorial, BOD, Cadel, uh, Toyota, <laughs> uh, Nissan. It's like watching a Disney movie when I mentioned Toyota and Nissan. <laughs> anyway, it's like a fantasy, you know. And the launch comes on the heels of Cherry's strong year, says Car News China, in both exports and revenue. The automaker... Sorry. Sorry, guys. I've got to keep, <laughs> keep a straight face. If you've been promising something since 2014, why does everyone give Toyota a free pass on this? I don't understand. Why, why do we smash the, the shit out of Tesla? Tesla promised us this in 2019. And we say nothing about Toyota promising us these EVs with solid state batteries for the last 12 years, 12 years. And they're still doing it. They're still saying they're going to be first to market next year, next year, next year. I mean, guys, I mean, if we're going to call up Tesla for their promises, you've got to do the same. You can't just like pick and choose who you want to criticize. Come on. Anyway, Cherry, they shipped 137,000 vehicles overseas in September, up 26% year on year marking the fifth consecutive month with exports above 100,000. In the first half of 2025, Car News China says that Cherry's revenue reached 141.6 billion yuan, which is 19.5 billion US dollars, up 26% from a year earlier. And actually, a lot of money has been from, Cherry actually did an IPO in Hong Kong, uh, went public, and a lot of the money from that IPO is going into the, in basically the development of solid state batteries. Heaps, massive percent. I think it's 25% of the funds. So we're talking billions of dollars. Now this reveal, says Car News China, follows Toyota's partnership with Sumitomo Metal Mining to accelerate production of cathode materials for its own solid or solid state batteries. Don't know what the energy density is. Toyota won't tell us basically the only company that won't reveal this information, reflecting a global race, though, toward commercialization of solid state. According to EV Tank, worldwide solid state battery shipments are projected to reach 614 gigawatt hours by, by 2030. <laughs> Guys, representing more than 10% of total output and a market size exceeding 34 billion US dollars. EV Tank, how the hell do you guys know these exact, I mean, this is the wackiest thing ever. EV Tank claim that solid state battery shipments will be exactly 614 gigawatt hours by 2030. That is like just picking any number. Just stick a number in a hat, pick one out. Yeah, I'll go with that. 614, exactly. I mean, maybe if they'd come out and said 500 plus, I'd, I'd say, oh, yep, yeah, maybe possible. But 614 to be exact. 614.2, is it, EV Tank? Anyway, Chinese research teams have shown progress. A Tsinghua University group developed a 604 watt hours per kilogram soft pack, whatever that means, solid state cell using a fluoropolyether based electrolyte that withstood both puncture and 120 degrees Celsius high temperature tests. And this is 
another, yet another innovation, which is going to take a few years to get to market, but I'm assuming it probably will. So what about the prices, guys? Interesting. Cost is the issue for Solistat, as I've been saying now since I started this channel. Four and a half years, solid state battery prices are estimated to be 2.8 times more than that of a liquid electrolyte lithium ion pack. Um, due to costly sulfide materials, low production yields, you know, not, not mass producing in large numbers, but 2.8 times more. I don't actually believe that. I think it's probably going to be more like five to 10 times more for the first couple of years, which is why I've said when they first come out, it's more likely that Jerry won't bring them out in affordable cars or mid-range cars. They're more likely to be expensive. But those costs, even if they're right, even if it's 2.8 times higher, by the time these solid state batteries get to market, we will be seeing, we're already seeing them, Cato's sodium ion batteries. They're already making them in their hybrids. They've got the sodium combined with lithium ion phosphate battery cells that are going into a lot of different e-revs and plug-in hybrids right now. So the new sodium ion battery from Cato, that's what will be on the market. And that's going to be about probably 40% cheaper than lithium ion phosphate, 2.8 times higher than lithium ion batteries, probably five times higher than the price of a sodium ion battery. So the question is, how many people will want to pay five times more? Not many. So I think the market will remain relatively small. Therefore, I think the idea that solid state batteries will represent 10% of the market in 2030 is completely fanciful. Uh, and I have, I've got to say, I mean, I might have even quoted those numbers in the past, but really, let's be realistic. If the price is that much higher, it's not going to be that it's not going to be that big of a market until mass mass production. We're talking like, you know, production lines putting out millions of cells. And then we talk, the price will start to reduce significantly. This battery, honestly, Cherry, if you've really got it, if this is really coming to market, it could. No one knows. I mean, they did show a prototype, which is cool, but we really don't know how far along they are with this battery. But if they do have this, Cherry's stock price should be worth double because. I mean, when it comes to the battery market, lithium ion phosphate batteries in the future, they're gonna be worth nothing. If you got your own great lithium ion phosphate batteries, um, there's some great ones in the market. There really is some fantastic ones. I mean, the golden brick battery from Geely is great. Uh, even Cato's own lithium ion phosphate batteries are really good. But the truth is uh, they can't compete with sodium. So the only way to really do anything in the battery industry now is, well, Cato, they don't yet have a solid state battery. So take this section of the market. That's the section of the market to go after, I think. Guys, what are your thoughts on this? Would you want, question, would you want an EV with 600 miles of range, 1,000 kilometers? Or would you pay a bit less to get, say, I don't know, 500 miles of range? To me, I'd take the 500. I don't think the 600 miles is necessary. Um, but it's exciting, isn't it? The future of this industry is just, Awesome. Let me know you, what you, your answers and what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.